Hello to all YouTubers, in this video I'm going to be doing an Ivy Braid setup. For this setup I have chosen the Silverstone um, Temgen case. It's the model TJ08E. Now we can find an unboxing for this case and all the parts I'm using in this setup in my YouTube channel as well. Okay, so for our Silverstone case, then Seasonic X660 um, power supply followed by the Maximus 5 Gene uh, motherboard, the Z77. Also I have two sets, I'm just going to show you there quickly, of the Kingston RAM. This is DDR3 1600MHz XMP um, RAM. This memory, um, there's 8 gigs in each packet, so we have 16 gigs in total. And all the parts laid on the desk should be exactly what I need to complete the setup except I don't have the CPU just yet, it should arrive in post tomorrow so um, I'll have to do this video in a couple of days but don't worry about it, I'm gonna join them together and post on YouTube as one so all the screws on the case are undone already so we could remove all the panels and start um, installing all the components so once again you can find the unboxing of all the components on my channel right there. Yeah, I'm posting some links for you guys, so it'll be easier for you to find them. Right, before we begin, um, I would like to thank my wife who invested in this setup as well, for making this possible. Um, this is my first um, quality setup as such. I've never chosen such a high quality components, so we'll see how it goes. Right guys, so first I'm gonna remove all panels of the case and then we're gonna start um, putting all the components inside. Now before we do, um, there's a list of links that you could follow straight away to forward to the right stage of the video where you would like to focus on okay let us begin now I have two things well three things I have a screwdriver all the screws that I have replaced uh, from the case and that will be needed for the motherboard and I think even power supply should be there then I have this air blower this is usually used by guys the own DSLRs, I use it for removing the dust from inside of the case or whatever, so it is the cloth. Okay, um, I'm gonna try not to leave any grease on the fingertips because that will just lead to gathering of dust at one particular location. Okay, so there's the case inside. As I mentioned before, the screw is already removed. Now, this thing actually comes off like so, okay? This is just simply your hard drive bay. So is the other one, and this one just holds your three and a half inch device, whatever it is, whether it's just an old classy floppy drive or just some SD reader, something like that. Okay, so inside we already have a 180 mil fan. And that's where I'm going to install the other pan, so let's get right to it. There's a Silverstone air penetrator fan. Now this has no LEDs or anything fancy like that, because the case has no window anyway. Okay, now before I install the fan, just make sure that you installing it the right direction. This one says, where is the air going to go? So we need to output it out of the case, okay? So this is going to go like so. Right, so it's quite a simple procedure. First, before you do, just position the cable where you need to position it. Um, I think I'm going to position it down there in the corner. So, to install it, I si uh, sorry, I forgot to mention I have already attached these rubber thingies on each corner. So, we can proceed with the installation straight away. What you do is just align them with each all in the case and simply pull them 
and that's going to secure that properly. Okay. Um, next thing, since I have it handy, we will install the motherboard shield. Okay. It goes to the back of the case. Now, before you do, guys, just make sure that you're installing it right. We're just going to ground myself quickly. So this is my motherboard, okay? It's gonna go into the case like so. So obviously my audio connectors are on the top. This is a larger case, that's why I'm checking again. <coughs> Sorry guys. So these are gonna go to the top of the Cut out. Okay, guys, sorry for the later. Now it seems like it's in now. Yeah, I'm going to show you next. Actually, I'm just going to remove the, all the panels from the case. By the way, guys, if you prefer to, you can use the. So I'll just show you there. You can use something like that to ground yourself. I've chosen not to because it's a bit cumbersome to use. So I'm just going to fetch the power supply every time I need to ground myself because the power supply is connected to the live socket. Obviously the power supply itself is off. Okay, now for the case, all the standoffs already inbuilt in this case. Now I could remove this cage and put a motherboard on it but I'll choose not to do so because it's pretty handy as it is. Okay so we take my motherboard and we're gonna slot it in. Oh sorry guys I completely forgot there's one standoff missing which was supplied in the case so there you go Okay, we're going to install it on the top, um, it says M3, I don't know, well you guys probably can't see it, but there's two markings, M3s, so we install it on the top one there, okay, now done, now we can place our motherboard into the case, okay, and we're back on track, okay, so next, we're gonna install these screws, just gonna show it quickly to you guys. And we're gonna start with the couple outside ones. Now, the screws are installed. I'm gonna just secure them one by one. Nice and easy, don't over tighten. Okay, so that's how your motherboard installed looks like. Next, we're gonna install the Intel SSD. Now this particular is 330 series, 120 gigabyte one. Okay, as usual, I don't know what it's that about, but every Intel drive I had comes with something like that. So, hence all the inside cages are removed. So, I'm just going to secure it with the four screws. So, the way it goes is these contacts will be facing away. And I'll be putting it right there and securing it with the screws. Okay. Okay, guys, so we're back. The SSD is now installed. Let's have a look how it looks like. There we go. So, this is the Seasonic X660 power supply. As I mentioned before, you can see the unboxing in my other videos. It's fully modular. Okay. Um, right, so it goes like so because the air will be taken from top of the case where the filter is and be blown out so there you 
good thing is the power supply will not be circulating or taking any air from the inside of the case. Now one thing is guys, I don't have the black screw, the screws are just these, okay, unfortunately. So we're going to just mount the power supply now. Alright guys, and that's the power supply mounted. Doesn't look too bad, does it? Some shiny aspects there and the screws, so it could be worse. The seasonic clock is upside down because obviously it's an inverted case in all aspects. Okay, um, right, so next we have all these cables to do, right? So I took already cables that I'll need. This is just a standard SATA cable for the SSD. Now they all labeled, you guys probably can see. I'm just gonna bring it over a bit actually. I'm oh, sorry, I won't be able to show, but anyway, they are labeled as you should be able to see in my other videos, okay? So this one goes to the motherboard, it says IDE SATA. So we just gonna plug that into peripherals. Okay, this is your 24 pin cable. Now this connects in two phases. Um, or should I say just, it has uh, two connectors to attach to the power supply itself. And the last but not least is your CPU cable. Okay. Now that's how the back looks like at the moment. There's obviously no CPU or CPU fan yet. I don't see the back plate, hence I won't be doing the cable routing just yet. I'm just going to show you where the cables would go on this case, in my opinion. So you can go through here, you can go through there as well. Although in this case what I would do is I would route it from the top and then it will come over from here so you won't be able to see it from the front. I'll just show you quickly there. Now, there you go. So the only thing you're going to see is this connector, sorry guys, wrong place, this connector connecting there and you won't see anything from the back. Now your CPU connector is, if I'm not mistaken, yeah, there we go. So what you do is you route it for the top, just make sure cables don't overlap and then you can route it back through the bottom of the case over there. It's nice and easy. And you just connect it to the point there. And then you connect the front fan, the back fan, and all that, okay? So next step, um, I'm actually gonna connect the cables and the fans, I'm gonna show you guys how it looks like. Now guys, never be afraid to consult your good old motherboard manual um, for the reason that you can, for instance, in my case, I want to see where all the fan connections are. So simply I want to do the, well, CPU fan not yet, but chassis fan one and chassis fan two. I want the front to be chassis one chassis fan one and back one chassis fan two so let's get to it okay guys and we back now the last thing what i'm going to do is i'm going to take those cables from the top of the case okay let them loose so these are all your cables for powering and resetting your pc and for the, all these LEDs to show and also you have a USB 3.0 
Now guys, if you don't have, I'll just show you that quickly, an USB 3.0, in this case, you actually have an accessory included for USB 2.0, so you just connect it like so, okay? So, go ahead aside. Right, so, first things first, we can collect, connect, sorry, the audio. So, the audio can go through here. I don't know guys if I'll be able to show it properly, but there is a connection on the back. Sorry, not connection, just a cutout. I'll be able to poke it through. And we're going to connect it to the HD audio on the motherboard. Right there. Seems nice and tight. Okay, now never mind that some of the cables are loose and they don't look too well because there's no cable routing done just yet. I just want to connect everything in this case and then see how does it look like. Now, I'm just thinking, should I? Yeah, maybe I'll do a proper routing for that as well. So I'll just use the same hole as any other cables and we're going to go through here and just connect it where it belongs okay so you can already see that when everything is properly done maybe like so you won't be able to see any or too many hanging cables Right, so next is the most awkward one because the sides are so small for this thing. That's to connect your high drive LED and all these things. Hey guys, and we're back. Now, by the way, if you don't want to do uh, this whole thing the way I did it, you have a simple call them probably standoffs for the motherboard for this particular motherboard anyway um, and that's all clearly labeled so you connect it to that all your cables and then you plug it into the motherboard so very easy I wanted to do this whole cable management the right way so I want the least amount of things hanging possible Okay, so there you go, that's all the mess. Now I'm going to come back to you in a few minutes. I'm going to show you exactly what's happening there on the case. Okay guys, so that's pretty much it. That's the end of the day one, because I don't have a CPU or the cooler. So I can't properly connect everything and do all the cable management. Because I don't know, uh, there will be more cables and there will be retention plate from the other side. So. I'll need to account for that so I can't route the cables here properly so so there you see there's all the mess on the back of the case that's going to be tight with the case and going to be nicely routed um, on this side as you see it's also very very messy so that's going to be done so when it's all done you're not going to see any of these hanging cables there as I mentioned before it's going to be something like this which is going to look very nice and neat and because there is no graphics card there just yet the airflow will be going like so from the front all the way to the back both air penetrator fans now graphics card wouldn't obstruct it too much um, I suppose the drive cage would hence I removed all the drive cage so guys um, that's pretty much it for today. I'm gonna to come back tomorrow, so and ex and gonna continue with the video. I'm gonna show you how to install the CPU, which is pretty straightforward. And it's another it's another LGA 1155 CPU. I've already installed one, and there's a video on YouTube. So thanks for watching, and see you in a sec.